So for those of you that have a hard time obtaining focus for sake of work or focus for sake of anything, I should say, and when you are able to achieve focus, it's through the use of things like stimulants or you feel like you have to have a cold shower or ice bath or you have to have four espresso in order to be alert, but then you're too alert, you're jittery, you can't focus. There's a really cool way that you can explore the chemistry of your breathing and your bloodstream and the way that your brain works in ways that can really benefit your health. And it works the following way. You want to essentially sit or lie down, it doesn't really matter. You definitely don't want to be anywhere near water. And what you want to do in this case is you're going to breathe in deep, so that's gonna increase your heart rate, and then exhale passively by just letting air fall out of your mouth. So it would look something like this. So it's a, you breathe in vigorously and then you let the air just fall out of your mouth. When you do that, what you're essentially doing is you're bringing in a lot of oxygen through that deep breath and you're exhaling a little bit of that carbon dioxide. But if you were to repeat it 25 times, maybe 30 times, doesn't matter if it's 25 or 30, somewhere in there, you would essentially start bringing in a lot of oxygen and blowing off or exhaling a lot of carbon dioxide. So you're actually going to change the chemistry of your internal landscape and you can then sense it. You can interocept what that is like. And there are some really interesting reasons for wanting to do that. So I'm not gonna do all 25 or 30 now, I'll maybe do five or 10 so you can get a sense of what it looks like so that it's clear. I'm gonna essentially demonstrate now. So it's inhale through the mouth. I am inhaling through the nose. So it's essentially, excuse me, a two second or so inhale and then a one second or so exhale. And as I was doing that, I can kind of feel my face get flush and my body is heating up and my brain is heating up. What's happening there? Well, that pattern of breathing is increasing levels of adrenaline in my brain and body and I'm getting more alert. Then after 25 or 30 of those, you exhale all your air. You dump all your air. You can do that with your nose or your mouth. And then you hold your breath with your lungs empty for about 15 to 30 seconds a very interesting exploration of how you can shift the chemistry of your bloodstream by modulating your air, by modulating the mechanics of your diaphragm and lungs, and thereby shift the way your mind works, your brain. And in fact, what you'll notice is that even though during that 25 or 30 breaths, you'll feel very alert. When you exhale all your air and you're in the breath hold, you will feel very alert, but very, very calm. Now, this is interesting because it's a state that we all sort of want to achieve, alert but calm, but have a hard time achieving. And so for those of you that have a hard time obtaining focus for sake of work or focus for sake of anything, I should say, and when you are able to achieve focus, it's through the use of things like stimulants or you feel like you have to have a cold shower or ice bath or you have to have four espresso in order to be alert, but then you're too alert, you're jittery, you can't focus. This pattern of breathing can lend itself very well to entering states of alert but calm for the, follow, the 10 or even 20 minutes that follow that breathing. When our eyes are directed upward, literally when our eyelids are open, no surprise there, and when our eyes are directed upward, it creates a state of heightened alertness. And this has a relationship to the brainstem neurons that create alertness and their control over the muscles of the eye and believe it or not the eyelids. Now it's not the case that if you are absolutely exhausted and you need to feel more alert that looking upward is going to make you feel wide awake although it will help support your levels of alertness. The point here is that you can optimize your workstation in a physical way that leverages this aspect of the visual system and your level of alertness. Since most of us want to be awake while we're working, try and position your screen or your tablet, whatever device you happen to be working on, at least at eye level and ideally slightly higher. Now, if you think about it, most people are not doing this. Most people are looking down at their computer or tablet or are angling their eyes at their screen at about 30 degrees. That is not going to support heightened states of alertness and optimal attention. In fact, the opposite relationship between eye position and alertness is also true. When we look down, when our eyelids are slightly closed, it tends to decrease our levels of alertness and increase our levels of sleepiness. I really want to emphasize this, that there's a bi-directional or reciprocal relationship between the brainstem areas that control alertness and the eyes, meaning how alert you are controls how open or closed your eyes are, no surprise there, but also that how open and upward directed your eyes are will increase your levels of alertness. And if your eyes are pointed downward and your eyelids are hooded, 
like they're slowly closing, like Costello's are always are, you'll feel more sleepy, especially if you're somebody who tends to have that mid-morning sleepiness or mid-morning crash. I would do a 90-minute out of work. Now, why 90 minutes? Well, the brain is going through these 90 minutes, so-called ultradian cycles throughout the entire day and night. Every 90 minutes, we shift over from being very alert to being less alert and then back to alert again. Here's how it works. At the start of one of these 90 minute ultradian cycles, my brain is not quite engaged in whatever it is I'm trying to do. Now, oftentimes I have things jumping into my mind. I've got distractions, etc. I'll talk about how to deal with those distractions in a moment. But I set a timer for 90 minutes and I try and get a strong bout of work done inside of that 90 minutes with the full understanding that the entire 90 minutes is not going to be uniform in terms of my ability to focus. There will be kind of peaks and valleys within that, but but that 90 minutes is about what the brain can handle in terms of a dedicated effort for high degree of focus. Here's an interesting little tip that's grounded in physiology. You have a direct neural connection from your bladder to your brainstem areas that increase alertness. This is why when you have to go to the bathroom, when you have to urinate, it is extremely agitating, right? It can be very, very agitating. I'm not encouraging you to get so agitated by filling your bladder so much and resisting going to the bathroom that you are uncomfortable and can't focus. But I generally will just drink liquids and work away and work away and I won't walk away to go use the bathroom unless I absolutely have to. In addition, I use low-level white noise. This is something that is supported by quality peer-reviewed data. It turns out that white noise, which is essentially all frequencies of sound, or all frequencies of sound that we can perceive, mixed up kind of randomly, there's no structure to it, turned on at a low volume, not with headphones most of the time, puts the brain into a state that's optimal for learning and workflow. And I covered two papers during that episode, one that showed that indeed, Brain areas involved in attention, brain areas involved in focus and cognition and memory, those are engaged to a greater degree when there is low levels of white noise playing in the background. The other paper that's really interesting did brain imaging and showed that areas of the brain that are associated with dopamine release are increased by low levels of white noise. Dopamine release is associated not just with pleasure, but with motivation and craving. So everything about this 90 minute block from the low levels of white noise to the position of my computer, how I'm standing and where my eyes are positioned is geared towards putting me in this tunnel of work. And I have to say that while it can be a challenge to try and achieve this state and this tunnel of work some days, you start to get kind of addicted to it. It feels really good. It's like a workout for the mind. And it uh, is something that as you exit that 90 minutes, you really feel like you've accomplished a lot because often um, you have. And it just feels deeply satisfying.